and hi everyone my name is manasri jerat i'm the community manager for ishi magazine and i am honored to introduce and humble to introduce our next speaker to you all radhya almutawakil a very warm welcome to you radhya um radhya is a human rights defender from yemen and she is the co-founder and chairperson of matana organization for human rights which is an independent organization working to defend and protect human rights in yemen she was named one of the time magazine's 100 uh, most influential people of 2019 and she has taken the voice of the ordinary yemenis to the un security council and has received various awards for her humanitarian work um i invite radha to share her thoughts on the role of women in peace building around the world so i am ravi mutawakkil chairperson of muwatana for human rights it's said it's a human rights ngo i am based in yemen and maybe yemen now is famous like the worst humanitarian crisis in the world and it is a man made crisis um where all parties to the conflict are committing horrible violations and from the word man made i will start my intervention uh, because usually in in the world we talk about the role in women and there should be a big role of women in making peace because they are the more affected from the war which is true but also the fact that uh, it's a man made crisis it's not human made crisis it's a man made crisis uh, so because women Uh, usually are not the leaders in the wars they are not the decision makers uh, this uh, uh, give women the space to participate more independently uh, for peace and i'm talking uh, i've heard the discussion about the definition of peace and i'm talking about the peace which is i mean uh, against conflict because we live uh, in yemen which is a conflict zone uh, so peace it means to end the war and also to end the war um with accountability and with justice and with uh, a political i mean um uh, agreement between all parties to the conflict so women because they are not part uh, actually mostly of the war like leaders of this war as i said they have the chance to do more in order to stop the war uh, but they will not actually be able to do a lot if they are not organized not like women i mean even like individuals in many different uh, platforms if if women doesn't have platforms it can be anything it can be an ngo an initiative, uh, initiative any other initiative it can be uh, a media platform if they don't have a tool in order to push for peace through this tool or to put all these uh, or whatever they believe in order to reach peace then they will not be able to do anything uh from here i uh, uh enhance the importance of civil society and civil society can be many things but also like ngos uh, in the middle of war NGOs are supposed to be the independent voice for civilians and victims of the war. And in Yemen, uh, actually many of the civil society uh, NGOs are led by women, uh, whether it's human rights NGOs or development or humanitarian, uh, and the role of women are increasing among the civil society uh, because this is the only channel or the only uh, platform they can participate uh uh to whether to stop the war whether to help civilians whether whether to make the disaster less um because in yemen all parties to the conflict i mean all political all those who used to be political parties before the war that has started in 2014 they are now parties to the conflict they all they have all engaged in the war in different levels so if women want to play a role what else can be done um um i mean i mean if it is an um organized role uh what else than civil society to hold their uh, civilian voice that's why i think that fighting for the civic space to be there uh is one of the things that women can do among the war if i don't have a space to work in the ground 
if I don't have uh, any platform, which is in my case, like an NGO, uh, to work against the violations in the war and against also the war itself, then uh, there is no meaning of being in the table whenever there's uh, a peace process. Because I have in many discussions, women, they usually go about the participation of women in the, whenever there is a negotiation in the peace uh, process in the table, which is important. But the fact that is not usually discussed that if I am not in the ground, if I don't have a strong voice outside the table and I have a platform to push for whatever I think it's right, then being in the table were not really that effective. Uh, and I hope that women in, in Muatana, one of in our, my NGO, which is, uh, we are a team of about 104 and half, half of us are women. We have a strategy in Muatana that women in Muatana should not be less than, um, than, than 50%. They can be more, but not less. And we are working all over Yemen. We document violations, we publish, we do legal supports for victims. And we also work in accountability and advocacy. And women are engaged in all these levels and they're doing a very great work. And this is the, the, the kind of participation we believe toward peace because we, uh, we, we think and we believe that human rights uh, can lead to peace and also accountability can lead to peace. And this is the point that I wanted to, to, to focus in when it comes to peace and women. I hope that more women will uh, be engaged in uh, accountability, which is also criminal accountability in order to hold all parties to the conflict accountable. There is a fact in Yemen that um, we are known as the worst humanitarian crisis, but actually, even among the war, Yemen doesn't have to be the worst humanitarian crisis, and it will not be if there was any kind of accountability. Parties to the conflict, all of them, they trust impunity more than anything else. That's why they are doing all these violations, and most of these violations are very preventable, but they don't care because there is no accountability. So I hope that because most women are independent and uh, I, I, I hope that um, more women will be engaged in all the process of accountability. And accountability, it's not, it's also local accountability if there is a space for local accountability or it can be international accountability by using any available uh, mechanisms for accountability, which is very limited. But part of the, uh, the puzzle that women should go through is to uh, push for more space for accountability, I mean, internationally. Uh, I don't see many women working in accountability. And it's, uh, I don't see many, uh, even civil society working in accountability. Human rights NGOs are very little in Yemen, and those who are independent are little. Uh, so uh, I hope that women will not be engaged only in humanitarian work or, or political work and uh, um, in, man, in many different, but also in the human rights work and especially to enhance accountability in many levels. Uh, actually, the war it just make all people equal, you know, so it doesn't differentiate when it comes to airstrikes or landmines or uh, ground chilling or any uh, of these horrible violations between men and women. Um, and I usually don't talk about the voice of women, but as I told you, I was thinking of the, uh, an angle that because women are not uh, leaders of this war, maybe it's easier for them uh, to raise the independent voice uh, and to be engaged in the accountability work, which is a very, very long process. I'm sorry if I didn't talk more about Muatana, but if you want uh, me to talk about Muatana with you, we, what do we want do in details? Um, uh, I'm ready to do this. And thank you. Thank you so much, Radia, for being here. And uh, I interviewed you a few months ago, and I'm so happy to see you live and to actually have you here with us today. Uh, we have uh, uh, we have Lena Shabib who's asked a question in the audience. 
um she says can we elaborate more about what actions lead to increase accountability and it because you know you raised this point that women should demand and i think somewhere there is this psychological quotient that uh, you know we are always taught to accept things and not uh, demand accountability so there is this kind of a psychological barrier in uh, in this question perhaps maybe you can uh, address lena's question on what are the actions that one can take to demand accountability uh i will answer from my own experience uh about this the first action is information information is a power and it's uh, the first um a step toward any work toward whether advocacy or uh, accountability and information here when i talk about accountability it means that i talk about human rights violations if we don't have a very uh i mean detailed independent uh documentation for violations by all parties to the conflict then we will never reach to accountability what can i ask and in very uh, individual people who are suffering for example from the war and they don't have their own uh, avenues or platforms uh to express themselves or to ask for accountability or for peace i can't ask him to do anything but if we have our own platform which is it can be uh whatever it is then through this platform i can decide what is my role in accountability is it to write about it is it to do advocacy about it is it to uh do a certain work in the ground about it so without being organized in any shape uh of um or platform that is very difficult i can i see this from our society in yemen i can't ask individuals who are suffering every day from the war to be the ones who are pushing for accountability they are actually civilians who are ready to be victims of this war at any time but i can ask uh ngos media platforms um political parties if we ever have it in uh, different initiatives to be part of it uh in different ways uh, it can be in different it ha- it's it's a very long process i if i if i uh, just stood up and say i need accountability this is not enough it's not enough if we are not working if you are not part of the whole process that led to accountability whether documentation or advocacy or doing like awareness about the importance of our accountability and uh, actually in um, as i said when we do our documentation we go to to survivors to eye witnesses uh, to to different uh, and we take the information for them and even if they are not educated people in many areas they are very uh, um it's very important for them we we explain to them for example that we don't we will not give them any uh, service as our work is to take whatever they say and to work for advocacy and accountability and we are so surprised to what extent people are interested uh, to be heard to be documented and they want accountability away from any other assistance so people are there and they want it but if there is no organized platforms to take this uh, desire um, through uh, certain avenues it will never happen i don't know if this is clear or not no we have a couple of more questions actually coming for you so uh, one is that people are concerned about their safety so when you stand up and demand accountability you know their personal safety can also you know be compromised so what should yes. they do yes very much that's why i said i cannot ask individuals who are mostly victims to stand up for accountability that's why that we have to have in our society people who are ready to do this and they have to do it in an organized way so i'm not safe my team are not safe but we have chosen this path and we are uh, trying to protect ourselves by this organized work uh, as much as we can there is no 100% protection if you will go through this path you will not be i mean safe it's import- uh, uh, impossible so that's why i cannot ask everyone there there should be people who choose to go uh, through this 
and to protect themselves by the professional work uh, to do it. So we in Muatana, for example, we protect ourselves by being independent, professional, being uh, very known internationally, uh, and being a very strong association in many levels. So even if we have, many of us have been detained, there's a huge hate and misinformation uh, campaigns against us, and we are expecting anything, anytime, but first, this is our path. Second, we have done our best in order to be able to be protected uh, and be able to do this work. There is no uh, guarantee of being safe while asking for accountability. It, can, it cannot be like this. Thank you so much, Radhya, for being here. And uh, it's a great honor that you came on our platform and shared your views. Mm -hmm. And uh, lots, of, lots of good luck to your team. And may you all be safe and may you take your work uh, to even, uh, you know, may, may that, that work actually lead to wonderful uh, progress on the ground. So thank you so much for being here today, Radhya.